While triple changing Zords were nothing new to Power Rangers when Power Rangers Turbo came out in 1996, it is worth noting that the rescue Zords are the first where the individual Zords were capable of transforming into separate modes by themselves and without combining with each other. So, first up out of the Turbo Carrier is the Lightning Fire Tamer, which is exactly what its name says it is, a cute little red fire truck with four independently spinning wheels. Well, no, technically eight wheels, but I mean, each of the wheels can, you know, they can spin independently. And the lightning part comes in with the fact that it has four massive rocket engines on the back, which I can't remember if they actually used those in the show or not. But, you know, nice surface details all around. God, I have a heck of a time focusing on this. Yeesh. And then the fire tamer part comes in where it has these posable uh, water nozzle hose thingies. There, there's some sort of, I don't want to say PVC, but they're soft enough. Maybe it's a, it's a variant of PVC. I don't want to say vinyl because that doesn't sound right. But yeah, anyways, you can turn these independently. So it's just a cute little red fire truck. But where's the fun in this? We can go to... Correct me if I'm wrong, high stance mode, I think is what it was called. You know, like this joint was always a little loose, never hold, held as tightly, even back in 96 when I got this. Am I back to that saying 96 or 97 again? This joint was never as tight as I liked it. Just, mm, whatever. This is kind of nice, because not only do you have a joint there, but you've got another joint right there. But it doesn't snap these two joints here. Here they don't snap into position very well. Put that down. And then recently, this has become one of the more difficult things to do. It's not this panel, although that has become increasingly difficult to move into position. But as I've gotten older, I've realized my fingernails aren't as durable as perhaps they were when I was... 17, 16, something like that. There's a little tab on the back of the head. So there's a little red tab. It is right there. And that was never easy to get out of there. But once, once you get it out, you know, you can use friction to get the lightning fire tamer into its, shall we say, robot mode. And again, this joint technically gives you a little bit of posability. He can look up and down, which, which is unusual for Power Rangers toys, at least for the transformable ones. Fists are really, really tiny, really narrow. Ah, stop moving. Ava, stop shaking. Mm -hmm. Posability, not something you can usually discuss, because of the transformation, you can make the head go back and forth a little bit. I suppose you can do it this way. So he's kind of leaning forward. You can do that if you like. And again, it's always had the ability to do this. I'm not sure why, because the transformation, it didn't need to tilt the torso that far forward, but for whatever reason it did. Now, ordinarily, I wouldn't have to bring up posability, but in this case, because of the transformation process, the arms are going to go on a friction joint all the way around. We kind of expect that. But we don't expect this side-to-side -side motion, so you can actually get a little bit of expression out of them. And then have them lean down, look up, and look, he's running towards you. Hey. Why did I say that? It's running towards you. Hmm. Oh, stupid. But I'm not going to do it over again. Next up to leave the turbo carrier is Wind Rescue which is a somewhat squishy ambulance that's totally missing one of its front teeth. Again, all the wheels independently turn. The business end of the Zord. I want to say I tore that when I put the decal on, or actually I can't remember where that came from. I, th I think it might have been when I was putting it on and I just goofed. Well, whatever. nice they put 
a little bit of detail underneath here because most of this is molded in such a, such a way they couldn't have put detail in there even if they wanted to. So, you know, they, they put a little something in there. All the wheels turn very nicely. This one, this is one of those Zords you have to kind of have to contend with the fact that it separates. On the other hand, that does make it a little easier to transform. Uh, so it's a little hard to tell if you want to pry it open from the top or from the bottom. Either way. And you actually hex have to go through two different processes. You have to get it here, and then you have to pull it out a little further, because it, it travels along kind of a strange track. Let's see. Get your fingers in the right place. There you go. Ordinarily, it goes straight, and then for whatever reason, it, it the, the the leg section here, surprise, is because the legs actually shifts downwards a little bit. It's it's small enough. Like, you need to be able to pull up from the shoulder. Like, you want to be able to pull from down here. It just won't let you, so you have to pull from the top, and then this just swings open just like that. And then flip the head around. Put it back together. And there you have Wind Rescue. Can't really call that a nurse's cap. Looks more like a, a Vorlon with two eyes. I guess. I don't know. And it goes from being slightly squashed ambul ambulance to a rather squashed robot. Although, I suppose, with deluxe zords, you don't really have a choice in the matter there. Again, there's this tiny little fists right there. Very tiny fists. And the legs, I made the comment that they shift outwards a little bit. Well, they shift outwards so that you can actually get a little bit of space between the legs there. Which is nice. It prevents it from being a mono leg. Which can be annoying at times. Oh yeah, and then there's totally the fists for the, uh, the rescue mags right there. Why did I bring that up? I don't know. I think it's my goal in this video to screw up when I'm uh, somewhere when I'm reviewing each and every one of these friction joints all the way around here, and because of transformation, you also get a little bit of action out to the side. So you can actually make the arms do that if you want to. One forward, one out to the side a little bit. Wind Rescue. Appropriately, third in line is the Thunder Loader. What a great name for a big green dump truck. Huge beefy engine sitting right here with a cab going all the way across. Imagine you could see three or four people up in there. This might actually be, uh, you know, the Zord might actually, like the real Zord in the show might actually be appropriately scaled to uh, some of the modern, uh, you know, giant mining haul trucks that are out there. Massive fuel tanks right there. It's great. I like this one despite the fact that the, well, the dump truck part is actually rather shallow. That's as far as it goes. But this does have the added feature of, because of its transformation, you actually can tip it over. But, you know, you can't really store anything in there. I kind of wish this had been used for, like, weapon storage or something. You can take the guns and, you know, stick them in here. But, you know, I can, I can live with that. A little bit of detail in there. Of course, the reason it's all shallow like this is because you need space in there. Why would you need space in there? You need space so you can make room for the legs right there. Arms to the side, just a little bit. You'd think they'd pull out a little more, but they don't. And then here's an interesting little twist. You squeeze in on the front side bumpers, and then you can flip it up and over like that. And then you double up on it, pull this tab here, flip this over, and there's the head of the Thunder Loader in robot mode. I kind of wish this didn't have a monoleg, but eh, I can understand why. I wish they'd treat it like they had Wind Rescue, where it's just down and out a little bit. I gotta admit, I kind of like the, the stunt suit that you saw on the show. I kind of like this one the most. It's a shame that the, the toy doesn't do it much justice. much detail back there. Squashed hands very much in plain sight. Again, some nice detailing, just generic whatever it is on the back. Posability, a little more standard at this point. 
these ratchets every 45 degrees all the way around. So, you know, it gets a little boring at that point. Second to last to be deployed from the turbo carrier is the Siren Blaster, which totally doesn't live up to its name because ironically, despite the fact that it's a very nice blue looking kind of Robocop inspired police vehicle, never fired a shot in the series. Not one. Actually, to be perfectly honest, uh, none of the rescue zords have any ranged weapons. I think they had them in high stance mode, but not the vehicle modes. Oh, hello, who's under here? These joints have become, the, the, the points at which they snap to and how easily they move have become progressively loose over the years. Transformation on this one's fairly easy, too. Transformation on most of these isn't fairly easy. And then last but not least, just fold this down and voila. There you have the Siren Blaster in robot mode. Well, you've already seen most of this detail, so I guess I just need to show you under here. You know, it's ironic, there are little holes here. You could have fit some weapons in there or something, but sadly it doesn't do that. Arms flip all the way around. And again, just like with the wind rescue, I almost said wind chaser, which is wrong, but with wind rescue, the arms can move outwards, and they even have a bit of inwards motion as well. And last, but certainly not least, we have the final rescue zord to be deployed from the turbo carrier and that is the star racer which has a nice name but what exactly is it it could be a race car which you know red lightning already kind of did that and you know race cars usually aren't associated with yellow not that they don't exist but this doesn't really look like a race car to me but apparently that's what it is but it also has this feature which is a backhoe or a plow or, you know, something along those lines. Nice detail on the hubcaps. Just, <laughs> excuse me, just like with the Thunder Loader, the Star Racer's wheels are also some sort of a soft rubber thing. So, you know. <coughs> Uh, that that goes for the front wheels as well. They also they can also come off. So they haven't even deteriorated over all this time, which I'm impressed with, honestly. Some detail on the nose provided by decals. This is a friction joint. In all the years, I thought that you would think that the bucket would be able buckets would be able to turn independently, but for whatever reason, this is the only joint that was ever provided. So. Eh, it is what it is, I guess. And there's a little bit of hidden detail up here as well. Like the little shock absorber, whatever it is, thingies right here. That looks nice. And then some, some other generic stuff. Oh, hello. Who's this? What's that for, I wonder? And it is for this. Now, this is kind of a weird one, and in all these years, it remains fairly unique as far as transformations are concerned. In the past, I was able to just pull the leg down, whatever. But over time, the black bar, you know, maybe I shouldn't have pushed this down yet. The black bar that goes through here and unites the, the two arms together, it's gotten more difficult over time to make this slip up and down. And what ends up happening is you have to transform this separately. And then, come on, get down. There you go. You have you have to fight it, and it, it, or it's it's become that over time. It's become more difficult to move that down into position. But you know, eventually, the idea is to get the whole thing to slip downwards all at the same time. Here's an odd twist right there, belt buckle kind of thing. So we'll put the nose back down, arms to either side, and then finally. Bring the head around, and there you have the star loader in robot mode. Feet on this thing are freaking huge. It's 
No wonder the person running the stunt suit had trouble walking around in it. It's kind of hilarious if you watch the show, really. The hats are kind of similar, too, to the, uh, was it the Thunder Loader? I guess that's a belt buckle. I don't know. Not really anything new revealed. Fists are very much hollow, by the way. The arms rotate, or they ratchet every 90 degrees all the way around. And that's it. Oh, well, you. And, and by the way, when you transform it, make certain you put this back to horizontal. That's, that's kind of important because if you don't, eventually you're going to pop the cockpit off. So, you know. So that's it. And just like the Shogun Zords before, the Rescue Zords are all the same height. They're all the same build, which, which is nice. I, I like that attention to detail. Um, the transformation, you can start... See, the thing about Power Rangers Turbo is it never really said that you have to start in one mode or the other. More often than not, they'd be deployed from the Turbo Carrier, and then they would change to High Stance Mode, or Robot Mode, whatever. I still... I, I still can't get a straight answer on that. But anyways, you start out in robot mode, and then they would transform. Well, the weird thing is, sometimes they would start out in this mode, they'd suddenly flip the vehicle mode, and then they'd change into their combined form. Others would start out in robot mode, and usually it's just, you know, one or two steps, and that's it. You're already at the component mode. So, for the sake of my own sanity, I'm going to start out in vehicle mode, just because it's, it's easier to start there, as opposed to starting from one of these modes. Yeah, it's possible. I mean... Literally, the, for example, the transformation on this one's just as simple. That, that, done. Transformation's ready to go. But, you know, I think it's a little more amusing to see it start from here and just do the two steps necessary to get it through robot mode. You yeah, know, that's, that's, that's just how I work. Ironically, this one has the easiest transformation by far. This one, you just kind of half transform. And by half, I mean you literally split it in half. There's two holes there. Slots fit over pegs. Make sure you line things up properly or you'll have a bit of an issue. Nice solid snap right there, and if you insist, these have become these, and these are just like on the uh, Turbo Megazord as well. They just flip out, diecast metal. That's it, and ready to go there. This one is a little tricky because, like, you know what? Just start with it pulled out all the way, pull out all the way, flip out the hand. Now, there's a bit of a debate here when it's like this. You've got that upper leg exposed, you've got the foot exposed. You've also got it, that thing I talked about earlier where, it, it, where the, the leg, actually, the lower leg, leg actually slides out a little bit. Well, there actually is another position it snaps into. It just covers the fist. Like some people, they'll assemble their rescue megazord with it fully extended. Other people will, ex will connect it with it fully retracted like this. Neither one of those is correct. Believe it or not, that is correct. You go to the halfway point. Flip open the joint there. There's one arm. The other one, pop it open. Again, fingernails necessary to get that open. Close it to halfway. Let this. And these are done. Lightning Fire Tamer probably has the biggest variations that I've seen in the transformation. Some people will transform it with the arms back like this. They'll split the legs, put it back up like this, and then they'll have these large gaps here on the sides. And then a variation of this, they'll do it one of two ways. Either they'll put the guns this way, or they'll put them all the way back like this. Technically, neither one of those is correct. Oh, and then, you know, the head opens up and blah, blah, blah. Technically, that's not how it's done. I've never done it that way. I tried to do it that way. 
it, it, it's interesting, different. It gives it kind of a slight backpack look, but no, that's not how you're supposed to do it. The way you're supposed to do it is like this. You spread these to the side, which also explains why it is those gaps are just large enough and why these all rotate on exactly the same slots right there. From here, you're actually going to keep it in this position. You don't want to lock this down all the way because then the canopy, which you totally can't see, the canopy won't be able to open. You can't get to it as easily. So usually, I'll open up the canopy first, flip open this panel, move these to the side, make sure this is snaps back all the way in there, pull the entire head assembly out thusly, put it back, and then close the legs up. Put the head down. Close like that, and like that. Not quite sure why I've been dumping them like that, but it's a change. One final step before we put everything together. Two accessory pieces are provided. They look similar, but they are actually different from each other. One is shorter and has a little extra peg. This one's longer, but the length of the pegs is the same. What these are for, the reason this one has a peg is because it fits in there, but it doesn't fit onto there. So you want to slip this back here. Star Racer, same thing, right there. And they just fit with friction. You will never confuse which one goes on which side because just like with the Turbo Megazord, the slots that are used for connecting the knees are actually different from each other. So there's no confusing which one goes on which side. Yellow is always going to be left. Green is always on the right. Slip these in here. Why did I bump the camera? Slip in there. Slip in there. There's four tabs you have to align with. And finally, big surprise, attach the arms, and there you have the Rescue Megazord. Ta-da! Compared to many other Megazords, both before and after its appearance, I don't know, Rescue Megazord's kind of wide and thin at the same time. You know, just in, in, in terms of deluxe transforming toys, an interesting little remnant left over from its Japanese counterpart, which I'll be getting to in a moment. Which was hidden in plain sight. And You know, the funny thing about all those decal modifications they made in the previous four years, I didn't even really notice that that said anything. You know, it just didn't occur to me. It was kind of like the TRI on the Triceratops on the original MMPR, the <coughs> Legacy Megazord, as they call it nowadays. But yeah. It's unusual to have heel spurs that are attached. In fact, off the top of my head, I think this is the only time they did it. But, uh, yeah. Well, there they are. You can see what... You can see why it is I was talking about earlier during the transformation. Some people prefer to have the arms back here, you know, the arms of Lightning Fire Tamer, back here because A, it covers this up, and B, gives it a little, a little mass in back. Not, not much, just, just a little. But the problem with that is it totally opens up the gaps up here. There's a big open space here. And then this panel, I and mean, look how everything's kind of neat and clean and flush across the top here. But with this panel raised up, creates a bit of a conflict, and then there's just kind of this little thing here. And so by folding the arms away in this configuration, it kind of cleans everything up nice and tidy. Now, of course, the option remains you can keep the cannons backwards if you like to. But uh, majority of the time, and, and also it's a choice whether you want to see where that light, the, the dark gray joint is, you could put it forward all the way, or I learned to push it back. So, you know, that's that's how I display it. But you know, if you if you want to put the cannons back, that's certainly an option. Although I don't think it ever did that in the show. I think they were always pointed forward. I'd have to double check the footage. 
I haven't seen Power Rangers Turbo for many long years. Posability is as follows. Again, an unusual posability rotates not every 45 degrees, but rather every 30 degrees. All the way around. Something else I'd like to compare for the transmission, just because I pointed it out. Here's one arm closed up all the way. And here's the other arm extended all the way. Now you tell me if either one of those arms looks proportionate correctly. This arm is way too long, and this one doesn't look like it has an elbow at all. So having a little bit of something in there helps. And by the way, where is it? Here it is. If you extend the lower leg all the way, then you've got this big old gap that's exposed right there. And so by closing it up a bit, you let's see, come on. You actually eliminate that gap. So that's why they that's why they put this panel here in the first place, so it would cover all of that up. See on the other side? Just covers it up. It's it's not perfect. And I suppose there is a degree of articulation if you wish. In addition to that, the transformation joint, you can you know, there's a little bit of give right there. Not much. But, you know, sometimes you can turn it to the side, whatever. And because of the transformation, you can also do this. Although that would hamper its only accessory. I'll well get into it right here. These cannons that... Uh, rescue Megazord Blaster? I'm guessing. I don't know. But anyways, one goes there. One goes there. And I don't think it even used them that much in the show. I'm not sure. First time that pistols ever appeared on a Megazord, I'll say that. And no, they're not fire hydrants, and no, they're not lasers. Well, I guess there are lasers, but, you know, whatever. Pistols, I guess. And then you team it up with these water hose faucet thingies, and, uh, I don't know, he's got a, lot, a good bit of ranged firepower. And then he's got rocket engines here, and I'll leave it to your imagination. Unfortunately, can't just be, you know, nature of the beast. You can, you can wiggle them back and forth, but it won't do anything. You also can't spread them side to side, because eventually you'll end up breaking the joints up here. So that is it for the Rescue Megazord and all of its accessories. Here's an interesting little bit of trivia. Uh, aside from the fact that I don't know when this happened in Power Rangers Turbo, this is actually the first example of limb swapping to ever occur in Power Rangers or its Japanese counterpart, which is known as Super Sentai. This is the first time this ever happened. And it's ironic, they only did it one time. I'm not entirely certain why it is they did this. I, you know, I, don't, I don't know the context. But it definitely happened. Which also explains why it is that they're, well, you know, which Zord goes on which side. Come on. And why it is the combination limbs were so similar to each other. Come on, get on there. I just felt like these would break one day, the plastic on there. But it did definitely happen, one time, and only one time. And here you have the Rescue Turbo Megazord, or is it the Turbo Rescue? I think it's Rescue Turbo Megazord, which is a name, and, you know, whatever. It, it exists. I, I, I have no idea why they did this, but uh, they did. It's actually interesting to note the posability in the arms. While it retains the 30 degree rotation, the arms, just because of how small the mounting point is for them, the arms are even capable of twisting here as well. Let's see. A little bit more. And since these, and since this, these, uh, bleh, 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 and since these are the Rescue Megazord's arms, I'm actually going to put this in. Here, get in there. This usually isn't an issue. On the other hand, I didn't do this very much, so 
perhaps the plastic didn't wear down enough. That goes there. That goes there. Oh yes, and uh, even on the rescue Megazord's hands, this is still floppy. So that's definitely a quality control issue. Now, you remember I mentioned previously one of my complaints was that Wind Chaser, when attached to the, ah, uh, what's it called? Turbo Megazord, I almost said Astro Megazord, which is totally wrong. When Wind Chaser is attached to the Turbo Megazord, I was, in my previous video review, I said, you know, they're, they're a little too small proportionately. It could have been larger. And then I said something to the effect of, you'll see in another video why it is I think that. Well, here's the other video and why I think this. So, Ava, if those limbs can swap there and these are made the same, does that mean, oh my god, you can actually attach the limbs onto the other Megazord? I don't believe it. Now, in this case, because there's a there actually is a significant enough amount of weight on the back, I don't know why, but it has a tendency to fall over easily. You don't have to use these on the Rescue Megazord, but you do have to use them on the alternative. Sorry about that. But anyways, these heel spurs go on the back like so, and lo and behold, it no longer has a fallover problem. Catch the arm here, and you can see now my complaint, this unnamed combination, they don't even, I don't think they even have a name for it in the, uh, in the instructions, which I don't know happened to them in the instructions, but uh, you can see here, much more obvious, how small Wind Chaser is proportionately compared to the rest of this thing. But, uh, uh, there it is. There was one little problem, though. There's this one peg on the right side here, which is part of the lightning fire tamer. It's actually a little difficult to get the arm to go up above, so you have to kind of fiddle with it. But, uh, there they are. Whatever, whatever that's called, and the Rescue Turbo Megazord. It certainly bears mentioning that accessory parts, which you didn't see in the series and which weren't really necessary to the overall function, um, which were, you know, specifically toy related. I don't think this was the first time this happened in Super Sentai, but it was the first time it happened in Power Rangers. And I'm kind of glad it does because it more or less fixes the problem that I had with the Turbo Megazord overall. I mentioned, you know, I wish there had been some sort of a, like, you know, the, the size of the, the, the front of the feet, whatever, but it definitely needed something to, you know, prevent it from falling over. And it wasn't, it wasn't impossible for it to stand on its own, but it was a bit on the rickety side, but you can see here, now it's standing upright just fine. I actually have a tendency to store these on the Turbo Megazord since they're, they can be used on the Rescue Megazord, but they're primarily meant to be used here. They're actually, it's more meant for storage, just to remind you, oh yeah, they originally came with this toy, but they're obviously meant for that. So I have a tendency to store them on the, re on the, uh, the Turbo Megazord. It, it definitely takes care of the problem. So yay, problem solved. <sighs> Take three. So tell me, Ava, what is the difference between the Deluxe Double Morph and Rescue Megazord and its original Japanese counterpart, the DX Hiso Gatai VRV Robo from the 1996 Super Sentai series, Gekiso Sentai Karinja? Well, much like with the Turbo Megazord, it's just material that they changed. Any area that you see dark gray, plastic, including the, the wheels, and here and here and up here and down here anywhere you saw dark gray plastic that was originally chrome dark gray here and here also the hubcaps on V rescue and was it V fire and V police those those were originally all chrome as well the um, the hubcaps, you know, because I mentioned earlier actually I'm not going to do that here but the, the hubcaps, you know, those were originally vacuum metalized silver as well. So anywhere you saw a dark gray on here, that was changed from its original chrome color. 
And the other, shall we say, more important material that was removed was the die-cast metal. Yes, there was actually die-cast metal in here. There's a little bit of die-cast metal in each and every one of them, and by little I mean a little. V-Rescue, for example, these gray bars in here, the shoulder joint, those were originally die-cast metal. The, let's see, i got to hold it up to you so you can see it. The dark gray arm, whatever it is here, that allows it to move back and forth like this, that was originally die-cast metal. Ironically, the only place that did, where the die-cast metal was not removed was these joints right here. While they kept it on the Turbo Megazord, for the Rescue Megazord, however, this is the only piece of die-cast metal to survive the transition. And the other thing that transitioned... And this one actually caught me by surprise, considering the fact that this also had chrome on here, and the, ar the arms had chrome, and then these decorative parts here, these had chrome. The other part that had, that had die-cast metal was the inside of the arm on V-Dump. No, this is V-Dozer, I'm sorry. V-Dozer. And the entire arm of V-Dump, which explains why that's hollow and explains why the arm is not why the arm on this is not yellow on both sides. It's actually, you would actually be able to see the, 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 gr the dark gray plastic that's right there. That was originally die-cast metal. So, each of them had, I mean, the, the legs by far had the most die-cast metal, which kind of makes sense because, you know, you want to keep that center of gravity low, obviously. Gravity is a factor when it comes to these toys. But beyond that, all... Um, Decorations, however, remain the same. They changed, they changed some of the materials, but otherwise all of the decorations, paint applications, stickers, these, these are actually the same. These were, yeah, these were originally you know, plastic. So even though it looks the same, um, they would change two materials. So basically anywhere you see dark gray plastic on the Deluxe Double Morphin Rescue Megazord, that's where they changed something. I apologize in advance if I don't sound very enthusiastic during this conclusion feature here. Um, I got this toy in Christmas '97, which went, you know, which would have been about the halfway point for uh, Power Rangers Turbo, because you know they start in the late summer, they end in the early, or they end in the late, yeah, they end in the late spring. Uh, so I got this Christmas '97 when the show was still on the air, and uh, got it uh, from my parents, actually. I could still remember my mom's reaction. I gave her my uh, Christmas wish list, and she's like, the Deluxe Double Morphin Rescue Megazord. You really want this. Or, uh, greatest imp impersonation ever, I assure you. But um, I still remember her reaction to that. But uh, you know, I was kind of bummed at the time, because it would be the first Christmas I was celebrating without my uh, grandfather there. So, you know, whatever. But uh, in terms of my initial reaction uh, to, to getting this and to having this, um, I can't remember. It's been, lo it's been long enough. I can't remember the initial thrill of getting it. And, but, uh, like, I, I'm, I imagine I was thrilled with it. Um, and I'd have to be considering I've hung on to it for as long as I have. Was it worth it to get it? Uh, aside from the fact that I got it well over, what, almost 20 years ago at this point. <laughs> Um, I think it was 18 years ago I said. I can't remember. 17 or 18, something like that. Anyways, um, do I regret getting it? No. Are there things that would change? It would be difficult for me to ch uh, to decide what to change and what not to change. One thing I did like about it, despite the fact that it's really thin from the side, as I've already pointed out, he's really wide from the front. Like, he's got good presentation. Divatox is sending one of her monsters along the way, you better look out when this thing shows up, because like it's it's it, I mean, it's it's got a quad blaster on it, water hoses, whatever. It's it's got four cannons on it, and it's got rocket engines on the front. Missile launchers, please. Well, at least I thought they were missile launchers, because it's not like they ever used them for rocket engines, anyways. But yeah, you see this thing coming, and you want to look out. Nope. Are you going to? Nope. I can't do that. Okay uneven surface. But yeah, like, uh, it was our, it was our first triple-changing Megazord. 
And it, it wasn't a, an accessory Zord. It wasn't a secondary Zord like the 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 Red Battle Zord or the Dragon Zord or the Falcon Ninja Zord. I mean, it wasn't one of those where it was the Sixth Rangers providing something that attaches the top and it just so happens to be able to triple change. No, each of the individual Zords could triple change. And considering the low I was kind of feeling from the Turbo Megazord, like, despite the fact it was the most powerful Megazord ever made, despite that, uh, I had my doubts because even though it had die-cast metal and that great announcement from Zordon, I still didn't like how small the arms were and how huge the legs were disproportionate. I mean, yeah, this thing has really huge legs, and that poor guy walking around the stunt suit in Japan back in 96... You could tell he was struggling with these knee-high boots because, you know, they, they didn't even incorporate ankles into the suit, so he's kind of, uh, 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 whenever he was walking through the area. It was, it was kind of hilarious watching that. But, you know, it's got a lot of bulk to it, which which was nice change. But the Rescue Megazord has a lot of bulk to it, really, which I which I like, you know, maybe not from the side, but definitely from the front. It's, def it's, it's going to stop some damage hitting Angel Grove, that's for sure. Each of the individual vehicle modes, uh, I wish the Thunder Loader had had, you know, I wish it had had some space to be able to carry something around it. Like, put, put, put the blasters in there, or maybe put the heel things, which are back on the Turbo Megazord, by the way. I put them back there, just, just like I said I would. Um, I wish there had been some storage space in here, even if you, you know, even if it's not used for anything that you saw on the show. I, I think it dumps like a, um, I think it's a bucket full of, like, metal balls or something, just pour out of the thing, and then the monsters just trip over it, something like that. I remember the uh, Star Racer was throwing rocks and all kinds of things around, so that was, that was kind of amusing. Those are really the only ones that did any fighting, and then, oh yeah, they did the whole riot police thing with these, so like, you know, whatever. But, you know, individual vehicle modes, eh. I definitely like this, this 1996 RoboCop car, police squad car we had. That was kind of nice. Had a, somehow had a little bit of, uh, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Not Art Deco, but had kind of a Blade Runner kind of feeling to it. Just, 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 just a little Blade Runner, but it was enough. I was like, oh yeah, I can see that. And it's not like the ambulance, the pink, the pink vehicle ever really does anything truly relevant in any Megazord that we've ever had. Not even the Firebird Thunder Zord, which just kind of wrapped around the waist and that was it. So, you know, pink vehicles, for whatever reason, is always going to get the shaft. Well, pink Zord, but you know what I mean. The robot modes, uh, they're disproportionate. Not a whole lot you can do about it, unfortunately. I, I don't see how you could, considering how bulky the vehicle and combined forms are, it's, it's, you know, it, it, it's hard to decide. Like, even I, looking at it now and thinking about it, even I would have difficulty deciding, well, you could have changed this so it would do this. So, things I would recommend to change, considering the age of the toy, and I'm a bit too late to be making those kinds of judgment calls, uh, not really. I think the biggest one I was disappointed on was Thunder Loader. Like I said, Thunder Loader was my favorite of, of all of them, although Lightning Fire Tamer has a close second in there, so... We got we we hit some posable shoulders and things like that. Thunder Loader, Star Racer, not so much. But you know we had posable arms, which was kind of sort of nice. You know, I I do wish that there had been some sort of a a knee joint in so that later on that knee joint would have become a forearm that you could work with in the Rescue Megazord mode. Maybe have the head able to turn. I doubt it, just because of the way the head was. Now you've got Lightning Fire Tamer's head sitting on the back right there, so I can I can kind of understand why it is that didn't transform. But hey, that can't stop a guy from dreaming, you know. Actually, most of these the head actually flips out from somewhere from or somewhere else. The only head that doesn't, the only one that didn't matter was Siren Blaster, which, which, which is a great name, you know, despite the fact that it actually didn't shoot anything in the show, which you know would have been nice. But uh, yeah. I can't say I'm meh at this point. I won't say that. Uh, it's definitely uh, a classic design. It's definitely chunky like you expect from most of your Megazords. Don't really have any strong complaints, or if I did and or do, um, at this point they've kind of fallen by the wayside and I've just kind of forgotten about them or I don't care enough to protest anymore. I think the only thing that has gone wrong with this over the time is that some of the joints have started locking. Oops. Yikes, bump the camera, I'm sorry. The, um, this bar that slides back and forth, and, and that's, that's an aging thing. 
you know, it's just over time, it's become more and more difficult to move that around. Um, what else has not aged well? Nothing in particular, really. The, this, this toy's aged really well in terms of production quality and construction and design and things like that. No complaints there. So, again, I apologize for having kind of a half-hearted conclusion and opinions and whatever it is. Would I recommend getting it? Yes, absolutely. Is there anything that would take away from it? Not in particular. Oh, by the way, the whole limb swap thing. That was also pretty neat. I actually found out about that from the instructions because I didn't see the one episode where they did that in the show. But, uh, yeah, this, this turned out pretty well. Uh, like I said, no strong complaints. Is it the greatest Megazord ever? No, but it's certainly an outstanding example of one. And so with that oddly mild recommendation out of the way, this is AV Unit 4A for CollectionDX.com, signing off.